Cheshire town of Crewe, famous for the railways, for Rolls-Royce and Bentley. But it's also got a reputation throughout the world for a very different form of transport. They're always getting me to drive things on the one show. But this is special, really special. Forget trains, buses. This is every child's dream. But I'm missing something. Hold on. Welcome to Crewe, the ice cream van capital of the world. From the Ukraine to the United States, these vans can be seen and heard. The tinkling music, the excitement of the children. The ice cream van is the universal Pied Piper. And we've got the Whitby family of Crewe to thank. Granddad Brian Whitby built his first ice cream van here in Crewe in 1965. And now three generations of Whitby's run this family firm. I had an ambition to produce the Rolls Royce of ice cream vans. So, <laughs> right. so, so once, one lunchtime I came and said, Dad, I'm going to come and work with you. I didn't even think that Stuart would come and join me, let alone my grandson. Yeah. So now we've got three generations, it's far beyond my expectation. It must be difficult, though, sometimes to work within the family. It's, it's give and take, you know, like in any situation. There are, of course, ultimately, obviously, my dad is the MD. And does he listen to answer. you when it comes to working out your salary? No. <laughs> no that's perhaps that's something we need to discuss. <laughs> Mobile ice cream vans first appeared at our seaside resorts and our streets at the beginning of the 20th century. And in the late 1950s, there was a huge surge in their popularity. The trouble with the old ice cream vans was that the equipment had to be backed up by a generator and an engine on board, and it made them very heavy and, and cumbersome. And what this company did was they invented this. It's a drive that connects the engine to the ice cream machine in the back of the van. Simple, but very effective. And it was a eureka moment. You were able to have much smaller vehicles, much cheaper vehicles as well, and they were more manoeuvrable to go around the streets and things like that. Well, why didn't anyone else think of this, then? I don't know, it's just too simple, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this invention had a dramatic effect on the business. The new vans became the industry standard, and now 200 of them are produced here each year. The key selling point for us is that what we produce is truly bespoke. If you were ordering a van from us today, it would be a van for you. The company offers plenty of different styles for its worldwide customers. Roll up, roll up in Africa, in South Africa, in Australia, Hong Kong and the United States. But surprisingly, in Italy, it was a hard sell. Italy is a surprise, really. Everybody thinks it's the home of the Cornetto, but mobile ice cream vans are in very limited numbers over there. They don't seem to grasp the actual concept. Take the ice cream to the people. From modest beginnings to some lovely old ones, ice cream vans, as far as the eye can see. And my favourite, the Batman special. Experts will note that both Batman and Robin have 99s. But who gets the most fun to be Pied Piper? Well, need you ask. Right, well, do you, do you want an ice cream? I'll give you an ice cream. Here we go. Whoops. Right, there we are. OK. Is that good? Pizza. You want a pizza? We can't have that. Right, it's not perfect, but you've got quite a lot there anyway. I've never been quite so popular. Perhaps I should switch careers. With a bit of practice, I could be a really good ice cream van man. Here we are on the site of the 1908 Olympic Games for the main event. A race between Alex Jones and Usain Bolt. Of course, it'd be unfair for it to be running. It'd be unfair for it to be being Welsh. So what we've done, we've, we've evened it up a little bit. We're going to find out who is the fastest at making ice creams. Two ice cream vans, Mr. Softy and Dev's Ices. These are the two uh, apparatus that are going for it. We're ready. Yeah. Wait for my signal, folks. I want these ice creams. We've got these competitors here. These are going to be getting the ice creams, free ice creams. After three, two, one, go! There we are. Quick, come on up. Oh! 
Make sure you put a flake in it as well, Alex. Let's have a look and see how Usain's getting on. Sorry. Let's have a look over here. This is impressive. Oh, Alex is already on two. Usain's doing all right. He's doing all right. Make sure you put, we're putting flakes in these as well. We're putting flakes in these for them to be proper. They can't be proper without flakes. What we want, two, three, four, five. You say he's winning, Alex. You say he's winning. We've already got 10 seconds left. One, two, three, four, five. We've got 10 seconds left, folks. Are we ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Has done one, two, three, four, five, six. You said it's done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He's done tw double the amount of you, Alex Jones. Not only the fastest man in the world, the fastest at doing ice creams as well. How? <laughs> How did that happen? It was impressive, wasn't it? Right, well, that's all for tonight. Thanks, you say. 9.58 being the world's fastest man is out on Thursday. <laughs> on tomorrow's show, a couple of dragons, Deborah Meaden and James Carr. We'll see you then. Now we're back at normal time. Bye. Oh, seven, yeah, seven. Sorry, I just... Celebrating its diamond...